Good morning, and welcome to Virtual Church here at PCMK. Well, it's another special day in the life of our church. Today is Transfiguration Day, which means the gospel story today is about that moment when Jesus was transfigured on that mountain with Elijah and Moses. But it, it is also a day that marks a transition. Transfiguration always comes just before Ash Wednesday. Yes, this week is Ash Wednesday, and the beginning of our 40-day journey of Lent. Today is also a Communion Sunday, since we had to cancel Communion last Sunday because of heavy snow. We've been watching the weather for today and only come out if you feel safe, but we will be here in the circle from 11 to noon to offer you the bread and the cup and a Valentine's treat for the children. We will see some of you then, but first let us worship God together. In our virtual church video today, our organ tour continues. There's a puppet show and a song for the children of all ages from our own Scarlett Hanlon. Emma Lim will read the psalm of the day, and then our message from the gospel will give us a glimpse of hope. We all need a little hope these days, don't we? So let us now worship God together. This morning I greet you from the beautiful sanctuary of the Rye Presbyterian Church. I wish to thank Jason Charneski, the director of music and organist here, and the church for allowing me to enjoy this beautiful instrument and share it with you. We're going to hear a French-Canadian built organ this morning by the Casavant Organ Company. Once again, I've tried to choose music that will play well on the instrument, and so we begin for prelude with French composer Naji Hakim, a set of mariales or dances for organ. For the postlude, I'm going to play a piece that I haven't played in nearly 20 years. The finale from French organist Louis Vierne, his sixth symphony. For special music this morning, we have a tribute to Dr. John Weaver. A week ago today, he passed away. And our school is here this morning, joined by Garrett Arkman, Director of Music Ministry at First Presbyterian Church of Yorktown, so that I can play the organ, and you're going to hear John Weaver's beautiful prayer for Transfiguration Day. Finally, the hymn I chose, number 75 from our hymnal, A Wondrous Sight, O Vision Fair, to the tune Deo Gracias. I hope you enjoy today's selections.
happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Mishmash here with your lesson. So, how many of you bought a box of Valentine's for your class? How many of you are going to give Valentine's with sweet messages to everyone in your class? Now, let me ask you this. How many of you actually mean the words on every card you give to your classmate? Don't worry. I'm not going to give you a guilt trip about loving everyone, although Jesus does say that's important. The message here is that there's a difference between saying, I love you, and truly loving someone. Love isn't just pretty words, it's action. Love is mom or dad making your lunch every day. It's calling a friend who had a bad day just to let them talk. It's bringing your sister her favorite things when she's sick in bed. Love is not just saying you love someone, but putting those words into action. This week, as we celebrate a day of love, think about how Jesus showed love and ask God how you can show love to your family and friends and your classmates that you have to give a card. Let's make sure everyone sees by our actions that Jesus loves them. All right, let's pray. Dear God, Help us to put our love into action. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone. Hope you're staying nice and safe and warm. Hopefully, I'll get to see you, or we'll get to see you at 11 at the drive through communion. Miss Katie's got Valentine's Day presents for every child who comes. <gasps> and we had to cancel the Zoom party, too. I'm so bummed. But don't worry, it's coming soon. See you next week. Hello everyone, happy Valentine's Day. I'm Scarlett Hanlon and I can't believe I haven't seen you guys in almost a year. Today we are going to sing a song that everyone can sing, from the smallest ones to even those over a hundred. Jesus Loves Me has been around a long time and we want everyone to remember that they are so loved. Call everyone in to sing along. Kids, parents, relatives, and anyone else in your house. Here are a couple of signs to help our young ones remember how it goes with a variation at the end so we can remember that Jesus loves everyone. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones, to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves us all. The Bible tells me so. Now sing it along with me. morning. Today's reading is Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, speaks. He calls out to the earth, from the sunrise in the east to the sunset in the west. From Zion, perfect and beautiful, God's glory shines out. Our God comes, and he won't be silent. A burning fire goes ahead of him. A terrible storm is all around him. He calls out to heaven and earth to be his witnesses. Then he judges his people. He says, gather this holy people around me. They made a covenant with me by offering a sacrifice. The heavens announced that what God decides is right. That's because he is a God of justice. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the time I recorded my music last Wednesday till this Saturday when our Scola met to record, our esteemed bass, Wayne Tabrock, had some dental surgery. We wish him all the best and a speedy recovery. In his absence, my good friend James Turner, director of music at St. Stephen's in Armonk, is filling in for Wayne this morning. Listen now as I read our gospel reading for today from Mark, the gospel of Mark, chapter 9, starting at verse 2. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with Jesus anymore, only him. 
As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, glimpses of hope. We all need them to keep going when the going gets tough. Sometimes it doesn't take much. A little hope, a little encouragement can go a long way. We've had glimpses of hope about the end of this pandemic ever since the first vaccine was found to be effective. Then it was approved. Then it got shipped out and the first shot was injected into the arm of a nurse right here in New York. That was a very hopeful day, wasn't it? Then hopes were dashed a little as it seemed to take forever to get the first few million doses administered. I remember doing the math and thinking at this rate, it'll take three years to get the country immunized. Then the new administration did things to pick up the pace and the result is that we are now administering over 1.6 million doses a day. According to Bloomberg News, it will now take only eight months to get the whole country covered. And we can probably pick up the pace even more. Those are glimpses of hope. In fact, I'm hearing about more and more of our church family receiving their vaccines. Some have driven for hours and waited in long lines to get theirs. Others seem to have found it to be much easier. It is a challenge for older folks who maybe don't use the computer very often to get an appointment. If you know someone who is having trouble, try and help them out. If you don't know how to help them or need help yourself, give me a call at the church or at home as we have people in the church who can help. If you want to help on a bigger scale, the town of Mount Kisco called the church this week looking for volunteers who can help seniors get their vaccination appointments. Call the town hall for more information. And while you're at it, call the governor and ask him to add clergy to the essential services list so I can get my vaccine sooner rather than later. These are all glimpses of hope. Restaurants are open again in New York City at limited capacity. Sports fans will be able to attend games at some point again this year. And of course, we are looking forward to when it will be safe to gather in our sanctuary once again. These glimpses of hope help us get through the months of masking and social distancing that still lie ahead as we work through this pandemic together. Just think we are where we would be without glimpses of hope. We would be so discouraged. We are exhausted from all the isolation and limitations, and we would be tempted to give up. But we have these glimpses of hope. We need to also remember the poorer countries of the world who do not yet have any hope of a vaccine on the horizon. This will be a test of our compassion and willingness to help others around the world, even as we seek to help ourselves. Our gospel story today offered glimpses of hope to the disciples. Today is Transfiguration Day. It is an important day in the church calendar it marks the transition from the celebration of Jesus' early ministry that we've been looking at over the last few weeks to the Lenten journey that will take us all the way to the cross on Good Friday. Transfiguration is a mountaintop moment that we savor for a few minutes before heading down the mountain to enter a season of reflection. If you've ever climbed a mountain or come across a beautiful view while on a hike, you will want to stop to take it in, right? Depending on how hard you worked to get there, you are proud of your accomplishment. But regardless, it is a moment to savor. In Mark's version of the Transfiguration story, Jesus has taken his three favorites with him up on a high mountain. Over the last several weeks, we have heard about the two sets of brothers who were the first disciples in Mark's Gospel. Simon Peter, James, and John seem to now be the inner circle that Jesus often takes with him to special places. We don't know what's happened to Peter's brother, Andrew, but maybe it because it is because this story is about threes. When they get to the top of the mountain, the three disciples are amazed at what they see. There are three dazzling figures in front of them. 
Jesus is somehow transfigured or transformed into something so bright that they had to cover their eyes. And he was joined by an image of Elijah and Moses. Can you imagine what that, what that would have been like for the disciples? They've grown to be pretty impressed with Jesus over these months they've been together, but Elijah and Moses? These are the founding fathers of ancient Israel. If it was today's world, Peter would have run up and asked for their autograph. Like a child who gets to meet their sports hero, he would have been wide-eyed and speechless. When our son David was little, he and I went to lots of ball games in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we tried to get autographs from heroes like Will Clark and Barry Bonds back in those days. Of course, David was also a violinist, so we jumped at the chance for him to meet Joshua Bell when he came to town in Portland. We have a pack picture of him with his arm around our young son. That was a mountaintop moment for David and for us. The disciples can't believe what they see. The gospel even says they didn't know what to say because they were so startled. Then they heard a voice that would have been even more terrifying than the vision. A cloud came over them and out of the cloud a voice bellowed out this message. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Wow, what an experience. Peter wanted to build a shrine to memorialize the moment, but Jesus said, no, it's time to get going. Peter wanted to see the whole picture, but Jesus was only going to offer a glimpse into who he was. It was a glimpse of hope that, that they were part of something truly special. They got a glimpse of hope that God was truly behind this mission. They were not just off on some wild adventure with this strange rabbi. This was the real thing. That glimpse of hope sustained them through all the trials and challenges that lay ahead of them. There were more glimpses of hope, but this was a truly stunning glimpse of hope. The life of faith is like that, isn't it? We don't have the whole picture now. We know in our hearts that God exists, but we only get glimpses of God's presence in our daily lives. We know that God loves us, but we only get glimpses in our hearts and our minds. We know that we are promised eternal life, but we only get glimpses. But those glimpses are enough. They're glimpses of hope that keep us going on this journey of faith. So how are you doing on your journey these days? Are you discouraged and exhausted from all that is going on in our nation, the political theater, and the struggle to find an end to this pandemic? Well, you're not alone. But remember, there are glimpses of hope. Our nation has gotten through difficult times before. I saw on social media someone sent around a photo from 1950 at the peak of the polio crisis. It was a hospital floor with hundreds of iron lungs lined up with patients who could no longer breathe on their own. Vaccines were the glimpse of hope that got us through that crisis, and they will get us through this one too. How about your faith journey? Are you starting to doubt that God cares about us? Or even if there is a God who would let a virus bring so much suffering? You're not alone if you're struggling with your faith. But remember, there are glimpses of hope to hold on to. Remember the times you have felt God's presence. Remember the trials and struggles you have come through before. God is there. We just need to open our eyes and our ears. Like the disciples on that mountaintop, there are glimpses of hope right in front of us, in nature, in friendships, in our heart of hearts. We know. God is there and that God cares. Today in the circle in front of the church, we're going to celebrate one of those glimpses of hope. Today is communion. It's a communion Sunday postponed from the first Sunday of the month because of that heavy snow we had last Sunday. And so don't come out if it's too icy or snowy where you are, but come if you can to catch a glimpse of hope. In that little piece of bread and in that 
cup, we get a glimpse of the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. As we partake of that sacred meal, we too get a glimpse of Jesus. In Holy Communion, the Jesus of history becomes our Savior and friend. In the Eucharist, the God of the universe becomes a very real presence for each one of us. It is a moment. It is only a moment. And yet it is a moment that lasts. Just as the disciples wanted to make that moment last by staying on the mountain, you and I may want to stay alone with Jesus. But after a moment, he says it's time to go. Time to go down the mountain and share the love of God with those around us who are lonely, hurting, or facing injustice or oppression. We are to be the glimpse of hope for a world in need. That's right. You can be the glimpse of hope that someone may need this week. All you need to do is keep your eyes and ears open for who that is and what their need may be. The glimpse of hope you offer may be all they need to keep going on their journey. Amen. Would you pray with me, please? And we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the glimpse of hope we find in the story of the Transfiguration. We thank you for the glimpses of, glimpses of hope that you love us and promise abundant life, even when the circumstances around us do not feel so promising. We thank you for the glimpse of hope we have because of the vaccines and the promise of science to overcome yet another challenge to our health and well-being. Help each of us to be a glimpse of hope to those in need around us, for those who need healing, who need encouragement, who need food and shelter. May we offer glimpses of hope even as we have received hope from you and your presence in our lives. We pray all these things in the name of the one who is our hope and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, God bless you. Hope to see you in a little bit in the circle for Holy Communion. If you can come by, remember there's a treat for the children. Elizabeth and Katie and I will be there to greet you. And Ash Wednesday is coming up this week. Watch your email for details about uh, a virtual church video that will come out to you and then opportunities to come and receive ashes, uh, the imposition of ashes in this same circle, Wednesday afternoon and evening. God bless and have a wonderful Valentine's Day.